Welcome to the weekly Metals, Money, and Markets update for the week ending Friday, April 29, 2016, hosted by Mickey Fulp, the mercenary geologist, and for MiningClips.com, I'm Eric Birch. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Eric. It's been a very busy trading week with uh, some very strong upside in precious metals. Uh, what's your take on gold and silver's move up this week? Well, we certainly live in interesting times, and that's what we hope always in the markets we can say that. Um, gold up 5%. In fact, if you look at the precious metals all the way across uh, gains of 5 to 6% for the most part, um, really driven by weakness in the U.S. dollar. All commodity prices were up. Copper was up to 229. Uh, I'll mention the gold-silver ratio remained the same. So uh, silver closed at 1781. Uh, that's a, a high probably, geez, I don't know how many months that's been going. Uh, uh, WTI was up 5%, closed a bit under 46. But it's all about the weakness of the U.S. dollar. Right, right. And certainly these uh, higher gold and silver prices, uh, gold almost pushing 1300 and silver closing in on $18 an ounce as well. Uh, it, it's really translated into some strong moves for uh, gold and silver equities. Well, it certainly has, and we'll talk about that in a bit here. Right, right. Uh, and moving on to energy, you mentioned oil uh, had another very strong week, and we saw uranium up uh, as well. Uranium was up uh, 3% on the week, but it's still less than $28 on the spot price, so not very many people are going to get really moved by that. And uh, earlier uh, you mentioned that the U.S. dollar weakness uh, certainly propped up uh, commodities this week. Uh, there are a number of developments that happened. Uh, what's your take on the U.S. dollar weakness this week? Yes, the dollar closed at just above 93, and that's a 52-week low. Uh, driven by three or four different uh, things that happened over the week. Uh, the Fed came in midweek at the FOMC meeting, no rate raise. Uh, you would have thought that was baked into the market already. Uh, the Bank of Japan uh, came in and said, well, we're not going to do any more yen stimulus. But I'll tell you, with a yen sitting now at 106, the strength of that currency, it wouldn't surprise me if the Bank of Japan backs off of that position here in the near future. And then finally, U.S. GDP, uh, Q1, a half a percent growth. And that, I think, surprised everybody. And I would say that's the real re weakness uh, in the dollar today. Right, right. That certainly is anemic growth, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, moving on to markets, uh, we saw the, the Dow retreat uh, below 1,800, uh, 18,000 this week, and the NASDAQ uh, also lost considerable ground, moving below its 200-day uh, moving average. Um, what's your take on all that? Well, they both lost a little bit more than 1%, but you know we're still pretty historically high right now. And uh, I don't know exactly where they started the year, but I think we're probably still up a bit over the year after a horrible start in January. The real story this week in the major U.S. markets uh, was the NASDAQ down 3%, and it continues to show weakness. But a lot of that has to do with its domination by Apple, and Apple had a horrible week. Uh, if that's true. Uh, it's, its earnings came in uh, quite considerably lower than expected, and uh, that precipitated a, a sell-off by uh, Carl uh, Icahn, uh, and uh, he said uh, he was exiting his position, and he was also calling for a day of reckoning in the not-too-distant future for the, the markets in general. Well, we've heard that from a lot of talking heads for quite some time. Well, we still have to see it happen. Doesn't mean it's not going to, but when people cry wolf for that long, uh, you get a little bit skeptical about it. I guess the real story this week is the TSX Venture, which continues to move higher and higher week after week. Well, and that has a lot to do with the rise in commodities, especially gold, but that index con continues to, to show considerable strength. Close the week at 675. I looked at the year chart. That's a high since early July, the beginning of the summer doldrums last summer. So we're not that far off of the 52-week high, uh, up 3% over the week. Um, what's r really happening in the Toronto Venture Exchange 
is the volumes are up considerably. We're doing well over 100 million shares a day. We haven't really done that for three or four years, those sorts of averages day after day. So uh, uh, liquidity and volume equal higher uh, market capitalizations. That's just the way markets work. And, we, and uh, also encouraging, we continue to see M&A activity. Uh, Nevsun, a copper gold producer in Eritrea, uh, took out reservoir minerals this week for $365 million dollars and mainly an all cash deal uh, for their high grade copper gold deposit in Serbia. Uh, it also included a private placement to, to buy Freeport, the giant copper and gold company, out of the shallow position there. So that's uh, encouraging for all markets when we see that sort of M&A activity. Uh, certainly, the M and A activity is uh, a positive, and uh, also uh, you mentioned uh, a financing on the back of that as well. And certainly, we've seen uh, a lot uh, larger deal flows this year than we saw last year. So, uh, very encouraging. Certainly is. Well, thanks for your analysis this week, Mickey, and uh, looking forward to checking in with you next week as we begin the month of May. Okay, look forward to it, Eric. Thanks. 